So now let's take a look at a case study. So to show all what we have already explained earlier on to demonstrate that you can perform the same analysis. So uh, the case study I'm going to be taking is the political democracy data set. So this data set actually comes uh, with the Lavan package. So when you load the Lavan package, you can have access to this particular uh, data. So the data set contains various measures of political democracy and industrialization in developing countries. So this data set contains uh, the measure uh, variables which we are going to be using to measure our latent uh, variables. So the first latent variable is uh, political democracy in 1960. So the variables measuring political democracy in 1960 are, we have Y1, which is expert ratings of the freedom of the press in 1960. We also have Y2, which is the freedom of political opposition in 1960. We also have Y3, the fairness of election in 1960. We also have Y4, the effectiveness of the electoral legislature in 1960. So these are the observed variables inside that particular data set measuring the latent variable political democracy in 1960. So the next we also have the latent variable political democracy in 1965. So this political democracy in 1965 is also another latent variable measured by the following observed variables, which are Y5 expert ratings of the freedom of the press in 1965. So this just like almost similar variables with that of political democracy in 1960, except it's for different years. So we also have Y6, the freedom of the political opposition in 1965. Uh, we also have Y7, the fairness of election in 1965. We also have Y8, the effectiveness of the elected legislature in 1965. And we have the last uh, latent variable, which is level of industrialization in 1960. So we also have the observed variables which are measuring this particular latent variable, which are the X1, gross national products per capita in 1960. We also have X2, the inanimate energy consumption per capita in 1960. We also have X3, the percentage of the labor force in industry in 1960. So now, this is the diagram of the hypothesized relationships between the observed and the latent variables and also the latent variables predicting a particular latent variable. So first of all, you can see our uh, Y1 to Y4, which are the measurement variables for the latent variable uh, political democracy in 1960. You can also see Y5 to Y8, which is the measured variables for the political democracy in 1965. Then you can also see X1 to X3, which are the measurement variables for the level of industrialization in 1960. Now, for, of these three latent variables, we can see that level of industrialization in 1960 is actually predicting level of democracy in 1960. Why level of democracy in 1960 and level of industrialization in 1960 are predicting level of democracy in 1965. So that's why we needed these latent variables to be able to predict level of democracy in 1965. So this is actually the diagram of the hypothesized relationship. So as I already said earlier on, one needs to get the hypothesized relationship very right so that one we are going to have a, one is going to have a very good uh, model fit. And also you can get this diagram plotted for you using another package, either Lavan plot or same part, which I will also be explaining later on. So now let's go to R now to practice how we can conduct our same analysis. So this is the script for running the same analysis. So first of all, you can see that we installed our package Lavan because we are not going to be able to have our data set and perform our analysis without this particular Lavan package. So if you don't have it installed, you can just use this code install.packageslavan to install it on your machine. Then after doing that, they are now going to load the Lavan package. You can see using the code library Lavan. Then after that, we are going to be viewing our political democracy data set. So let me just run this particular line of code. I'm going to be using the view function to open this data set on a new tab. So you can see my political democracy data set. So you can see it now. You can see my variables. You can see the various variables we discussed earlier on. You can see Y1 to Y8. You can also see X1 to X3. If you also notice here, you can see we're dealing with continuous variables. So these are values which are on a continuous case. But that's, Lavan is not only restricted to continuous variables. You can actually perform it on categorical variables. But you need to code those categorical variables into uh, numbers. So let's say you're having two variables, uh, two values under a particular variable, let's say sex, which is male and female. So you can actually represent female with zero and you can represent male with one. If you're also having another variable, let's say height, we have, uh, or let's say weight, we have small, we have medium, uh, we have uh, large. Uh, so you can represent it also in three, uh, you can code it in three numbers. You can have one, two, like maybe one can be for small, 
two can be for medium and three can be for uh, heavy or large now that is it for our data sets which we are going to be working with. i already explained which value is actually measuring a particular latent variable so also just to check for the structure of the political democracy we can know that all of them are continuous variables so you can see it's it's uh, they are all continuous uh, variables right from this particular uh, result which we are having currently and now this is the model specification which we already explained in the diagram but you need to type this model specification because this is what you are going to be using to fit your same model so first of all we are giving a mo uh, measurement model i already explained earlier on that your me the measurement model is actually where you specify which measurement variable is uh measuring a particular latent variable and you use the t equals to and tilde sign so you can see level of industrialization in 1960 is being measured by x1 x2 and x3 you can also see that level of democracy in 1960 is also being measured by y1 y2 y3 y4 they also have level of democracy in 1965 which is being measured by y5 y6 y7 and y8 then we also have our regressions so after we've already measured our latent variables then we have our regressions so which latent variable is actually predicting another latent variable so this is where we have level of democracy in 1960 is being predicted by level of industrialization in 1960 then we also have level of industrialization in 90, level of democracy in 1965 is being predicted by level of industrialization in 1960 and level of democracy also in 1960 they also have residual correlations or also covariances between our observed variables. You can see Y1 and Y5 are having a covariance of each other. We also have Y2, which is also a covariance of Y4 and Y6. We also have uh, Y3 and Y7, which are covariance of each other. We have Y4 and Y8, which are also covariance of each other. And we have Y6 and Y8, which are also covariance of each other. So now, after doing that now, then you're going to highlight all. We highlight it because we know it is in a string and we want to rerun it. Control enter. So we're going to run it. And after doing that, we already have our model. So if I'm to call it out now, you can see our model is going to pop up. So you can see our model. This is it. This is it. So most of this uh, slash and end means, and, uh, means a new line. Then we can now fit our model. So you use the same function to fit your model where you give two compulsory arguments, uh, two compulsory arguments which are model and data. So first of all, you give the model which we created earlier on. Then you also give your data, which is our political democracy data. So then you're not going to run, to run this. After doing that, you already have your model run. Then the next thing, or let's say the last thing which you're going to do, is to get your summary of your model fit. So this is where you're going to be seeing how well your same uh, model fits the data and also your model parameters and also your coefficients. So this is where you now run the summary. Uh, you run the summary function. And the summary functions you can give various options so you first of all you have to give your model fit that is the particular model which you created earlier on and then the next is going to be your fit measures so your fit measures is what will allow you to measure your model fit so i'm going to be setting it to true because we want to see how well our model fits the data then also we have standardized is equals to true so standardized is equals to true allows all your variables to be standardized sometimes some variables are not uh so we can have another variable in kilograms another variable height is measured in uh, let's say meters but by standardizing it we are going to be able to relate all these variables with each other so that can, they can all be on the same uh, scale so that's why we're setting standardized is equals to true so i'm going to be running this also so you can see the results which we have so let me expand this a little bit so can have a clearer view and i'll run it here so so now i can see the lavan summary so first of all, you can see what we are having. So, but these are the important uh, things which we are interested in, such as the chi-square. But I say that we cannot use the chi-square because when you have a larger sample size, it always returns that it is what, regardless of your sample size is large, the chi-square is going to return, uh, return it to be what insignificant. So far as your sample size is large, even though your model is not a good uh, fit. But what you are actually interested in are, are the indexes such as the indices such as the CFI. You can see it is 0 0.995, which means our model is a good fit based on what I've already explained earlier on. We can also have, we also have the TLI, Tucker Lewis Index, which is 0 0.993, which explains our model is also a good fit based on what I've already explained earlier on. 
then we have uh, the AIC and BIC, which are not actually useful currently now, but are useful when comparing various models. When you're comparing another same model with another model, this is where you use it. Maybe in another model, you not use you used more measurement variables or you used more uh you use fewer measurements variables or you increase the latent variable so you can compare these two models together to see which one have a uh, which one has a good fit so the lower value is actually the better model then you can also see we have our rmsca which is 0 0.035 which is also signifying a good fit because it is less than 0 0.05 you can also see our srmr which is also less than 0 0.05 indicating it is a good fit so based on all these values now we are good to go that our model is actually a good fit so the next thing we we'll go to now is our what's coefficient so you can see we have our estimates here and we also have standardized latent variables we also have standardized also these are the factor loadings these are the standardized factor loadings and these are what we are going to be using so this standardized factor load is actually range between minus one to one so from this now i can now see how strong a particular loading uh, how strong a particular measurement variable is in most literature they said we can you can actually keep a factor loading greater than 0 0.5 which you can now see that all our factor loadings here are greater than 0 0.5 and they're having strong relationships with their latent variables you can see it here 0 0.92 for x1 with a resolution in uh, 1960 and you can also see for other variables too in this place so this is what we're actually interested in this particular standardized uh, factor loadings and you can also see that this particular line also is the p values which also signifies that these factor loadings are what significant they also have our regressions so you can see our regressions in this place you can see uh the p value you can also see the estimate of the regression so you can see this 1.483 means that for every unit increase in level of industrialization in 1960 the level of democracy in 1960 increases by 1.483 and also for every unit increase in industrialization in 1960 level of democracy in 1965 increases by 0 0.572 and for every unit increase in democracy in 1960, level of democracy in 1965 increases by 0.837. So this is how the regressions are interpreted, just like your normal regular regressions. You can also see that the p-value is really signifying that this particular regression coefficients are significant. You also have the covariances, which is signifying the covariances between a particular variable and also another variables. So this is just all for the interpretation of the same analysis. It is very easy. You can see how easy it is to perform same analysis in R. So now let's summarize all what I've already explained earlier on. We can first of all, the key takeaways we have, we know that structural equation model is a statistical technique used to analyze the relationship between latent unobserved variables and observed variables. We also talked about as the Lavan package, which is used for performing same analysis in R and allows people to specify their model using syntax that is similar to standard regression equations. They also talk about when using Lavan, it's important to specify your model correctly because this is this lets you is from here you are going to know whether you are going to have a good model fit by assigning the right measurement variables to the right latent uh, variables. And also, uh, Lavan allows you the, fee, the users to test the fit of their models using various indices which we have talked about, such as chi square, RMSCA, CFI, and also TLI. And also, when interpreting the result of Lavan analysis. It's important to consider both the statistical significance of the estimate and also their practical uh, significance. And finally, the same is a powerful tool that can help researchers better understand the complex relationships between variables, but it's important to use it appropriately and also with uh, caution. So I have various resources here, which I'm going to be sharing in the link. So these resources are, first of all, chapter 6 of the book, Structural Equation Modeling, uh, of chapter 6 of the book, Introduction to R for Data Science. Also have chapter six of also the book using R for social work research. I also have the documentation of the Lavan package, which is called the Lavan project. So these are the various resources which you can also access to get more understanding of performing same analysis in our.